Hi, I'm Bonnie Frederico of The Stella Shop. I'm here at the Grafton Cable TV doing a little show for you, Let's Try Something New. Last week was our first week, and we started working on a bookmark, something simple that you can learn to do and inexpensive with your colored pencils. So my bookmark that we worked on last week, this is the completed bookmark. And you can see this is what we were working on last week, the top maple leaf. So today, we're going to go through the bottom oak leaf. Oak leaves can be almost anything. They can have color. They can be boring. They can be all brown. They can be golden. So as we go along, even though I'm going to be choosing the colors today, it really doesn't matter what the color is if you don't have the particular colors that I'm working on. Just to get us started, we're going to re-practice some of the things that we did last week, some of the different strokes. So what we do first, you can take a nice, sharp pencil. I have a piece of practice here. And I'm going to start practicing my Brillo pad stroke. Now, any of you that are older, you know what a Brillo pad is. And it's just a series of little circles that I'm doing. So you can do them heavy, you can do them light, but that's usually how we fill an area in. Sometimes we might be using a linear stroke, which is a series of lines close together, or we could do a Brillo pad in a linear manner. So I've kind of used the same pressure on all three of these. The interesting thing is, light pressure gives you one look. As you start to increase your pressure, it gives you another look. And then you can move on to a heavier pressure. Usually, when we start basing in our object, we used to usually use our light pressure and do a couple of coats. Better to do two light coats than one heavy coat, because if you get it on too heavy, sometimes it really makes a shiny surface, and it's hard to add another color onto the top area. Some of the papers that we work on, like I had shown last week, kind of have little dips in them, almost like an English muffin. So I always say to my students, try to keep your pencils nice and sharp so as we're working the color, it goes down into these nooks and crannies and gives us a better way of filling in our design. Another interesting technique that we're going to use on the oak leaf today is called incising. And we're going to incise the vein on the leaf. So I'm just going to take my stylus and use some pressure. And just so you can see what happens is, I'm going to draw some lines on my practice piece. And then by using a broad Brillo pad stroke, you can see where I've dented or incised the paper that the color doesn't go there unless I work really hard with a nice point on my pencil to get it down in those crannies. So that's what it would look like when you see a something is incised. So that was a quick rundown of the basic steps. Brillo pad and linear are mainly what we will be using today. Here is the picture of the oak leaf that I have started. I've got my colors started on there, but like I say, don't be afraid. If you've been outside, you can pick up any color leaves that you want. You can draw on any oak leaf that you want. We have smooth leaved oak leaves. We have pointed edges. Doesn't matter what you decide you want to do. But I'm going to do one with these rounder edges. I'm going to start off with my canary yellow. And I'm going to start filling in some of the tips with canary yellow. I put a couple of coats 
on some of these just to have a jump start on doing this so you don't have to watch me fill it in quite so long. So I've picked three areas to fill in canary yellow. And now I've got two coats here, so it's a pretty decent coverage of the canary yellow. So I'm just getting started so you can see how I'm going to progress. Then I'm going to grab a color called marine green. It's kind of an olivey green, and I'm going to start adding some marine green next to the canary yellow but I'm also going to come down on top of the canary this time. And it'll give us another interesting color because these are wax-based pencils. They are translucent, which means the color underneath shows through and it helps us get a lot of interesting colors by building up. They're not transparent, they're not opaque, but they're translucent. And then after I've got my yellow colored, I'm going to move into the main body of the leaf, doing my circular strokes, dropping off because I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to apply my next color. So I don't want to build up a hard edge. I'm going to go over to the other side of the leaf where I have applied a little bit of the yellow. And again, I'm going to cover the yellow using my Brillo pad stroke with a light pressure, working towards the center of the leaf. Sometimes you might see me turning my pencil, kind of outlining an edge to keep a nice, clean, crisp edge, maybe exerting a little more pressure. Kind of created a line there. I'm going to go back. I'm going to use some pressure, add some more yellow. I don't like what I'm seeing there. But again, I have to be careful that I don't get too much wax going on this. Last week I had said, good idea when you're doing this, if you keep some kind of a tissue under your hand, particularly if you have a lot of hand cream on your hand or it's oily, because if the oil gets onto your piece, then it will repel the pencil. Just to make it interesting, I put a bug hole, you can see here, in the middle of the leaves. So I think I'll put, oh, maybe just a little green around here, but I'm going to be introducing some brown. So I'm going to do this whole tip with light green at the moment until I decide how am I going to do this. The unfortunate thing is I've blown this up a little bit hoping it would be better for you to see this, but it takes me a little bit longer to do the penciling. You really should try to hold your pencil up straight so the tip can get into those nooks and crannies that I've talked about. Oh, and as I can see, I'm coming across an incise line that I put on here but forgot to go back and put them on the rest. So I'm going to quickly go back and just pull a couple of side veins because it'll make the leaf more interesting. You can tell just as I turn my pencil, uh, it's got a better point on it and it's weighing the color down a little differently.
I can't say this enough times, you always need to have a nice point on your pencil. I'm going to add a little more green to the top up here. Now this oak weave so far that I'm working on really isn't too exciting, just green and yellow so far. Here I've added green on top of the yellow. I think I'll come down here and add some yellow on top of the green and we'll see if we're going to get a little different color. Remember, this is a layering technique. So I've got some of this filled in. You can see I have only used two pencils. I've used the canary yellow and the marine green. I'm going to introduce some brown, some burnt okra to it. Maybe down the mid area. And I'm going to try to lightly work it into the green or the yellow that I already have there. And you can see I did a good job of incising the center vein. So I'm going to work my way down the center area, adding the brown color. And I think I'll pull it over into this other outside rounded edge because all the rest of them are either, either green or yellow. I should keep remembering to turn my pencil to keep a nice point. One of my students, I'm always reminding her to sharpen her pencil, but the funny thing is her pieces seem to come out the best. I don't know why. She has a rounded tip, which is supposed to be a bad thing to do, but Beautiful work. So I'm continually using my Brillo pad back and forth, back and forth. I'm kind of using a light to medium pressure here. You may find as a beginner when you're doing this, your hand hurts. The more that you do, you'll get used to it and you'll be able to pencil, you know, two or three hours and it won't bother you at all. So I'm working my way down the middle here. The exciting thing about last week's maple leaf, usually you have a much more varied palette. You can get some really bright reds and oranges, and not that I couldn't do that on this. All right, so basically, I have the first coat onto the leaf. So now we have to try to bring it together by adding more layers and start blending. I think at the moment I will go back to my green and see if I can get another coat on some of my green areas and strengthen the green so it doesn't look so wishy-washy. I don't really like my pieces so that you can see through and see all the little white holes peeking through. I like, like it to look more like an oil painter has painted this, but it's just a personal preference. After I do a little more, I'll show you exactly the difference it's making now that I'm starting to get another coat on here. And I'm using a little more pressure. Oh, keep forgetting getting to keep this under my hand.
think I'm going to grab a little bit of a red color because we had that in the maple leaf. I'm going to see if I can get a little red around that hole that I drew on the leaf. Now, red and green obviously create brown, but it'll make it a little more interesting in that area. I think as long as I have the red pencil in my hand, trying to remember to hold it up like I'm recommending to you. Try to make this one a little more interesting. I think I'll go back to my burnt okra, but you can see how now that I've got more green on there, it's starting to look like an oil painting. Some nice depth. So I'll keep adding. I've gone back to my burnt okra. I'm going to deepen the center area. When I had first started to do colored pencils, I didn't know about incising, but it comes in very handy for uh, veins, whiskers, on cats, dogs, or anywhere that you really want to save a nice straight white line. Sometimes it could be to your detriment, but. All right, remember, I'm not trying to make a perfect picture, but doing it as quickly as I can so you can see the technique. It would be great to have a show that people could call in and ask questions. OK, back to the marine green. So this is how it's starting to look. Hopefully better. Now I'm bringing some of the marine green into the okra, okra color so they blend better. I think at the moment I'll just concentrate on the right hand side of the leaf and we'll see how we can get that to come together. And look like an interesting oak leaf. Once you do one of these and you're out for a walk and you're looking around, you start noticing all the beautiful leaves out there. Not only the maples, but the oaks. I actually found one the other day that was a beautiful pink, kind of taupey color, something I've never really seen before. Any art that you get into, it makes you more aware of your surroundings and you appreciate, I think, everything in nature just a little bit more. You can see I have a decent amount of wax pencil laid down on the right hand side. I'm going to take a tool that's called a tatillion. These are just rolled paper. They come in all sizes, small and large. I'm going to take the large one and instead of adding more wax by using another color or the same color, I'm going to do some more blending with this to tea in. 
Same stroking, I'm going to circularly blend. And this will help push the color into some more of the holes of the paper. Luckily, this is a pretty smooth paper. But it helps to blend the color so you have a better transition from one color to the next. There are other ways of doing this, more advanced ways, but this is a good beginning, inexpensive way to blend your colors together. So the Tatian has done a pretty good job of blending the right-hand side. Now what happens is, when you use the Tatian, they pick up a lot of color on the tip. What you need to do is either have one for every single color, but that's really not realistic. You would have a piece of sandpaper, which I don't have with me, but just imagine that this would be a little piece of sandpaper. And you just take your Tatian and rub it back and forth on the tip of the sandpaper. It would take the color off, and you'd have a clean tip ready to move on to an area, let's say that was light pink or anything light, but you didn't want to put this dark green color down. I'm going to take now on the right-hand side, and then I'll go back to the left side. Uh, I'm going to try to make my veins look a little bit more interesting. I did do a great job in sizing them, but I did such a good job, they're really jumping off the paper. So now I'm going to go back with a brown, or you could use a red, and I'm going to try to A, either soften, okay, that was a good thing I did, and bad thing. You always want to have, when you're doing this, a soft brush. I exerted too much pressure on the tip of the pencil. I snapped it off. You never want to use your hand to wipe off. You always want to have a nice little brush to dust off those little pieces, because otherwise you could smudge the edge of your paper. So we'll see how this is going to work. I'm going to use some pressure, try to deepen up a little bit where the vein might have started. And if possible, it's a little strong, put a little cast shadow under Beneath the vein so they don't stick out quite so much. Or if I had to, I could even go over them. Because like I say, I pressed down so hard I was worried about you seeing them. They're really too strong. And you could have, I mean, now they almost look too dark. But I could go in, I could put some yellow on top of them. I could put some green. But it's kind of nice to have a nice light area to start with. And right, I'm going to go up into the stem area a little bit, put a nice stem on it. I think this one's going to have, seeing we've got so much green here, I think I'll come up and give us a little brown stem. Blend it into the green that I started with. And you can see I've got kind of a cute little stem up on the top. I'm glad that you were able to see a more completed right-hand side than a left-hand side. I want to show you just a couple of, or at least one trick, because there's always somebody that says, oh, I don't want to do colored pencils. If I make a mistake, I can't correct it. Well, this is just Scotch Magic Tape. And what you can do, let's make believe that I put down the wrong color. 
I can put it down right here on the green of the weave. I'm going to use my fingernail with some pressure, and then I'm going to lift it off. And you can see the area that has been lifted off with the scotch tape. So I could come back in and put orange in there, any color. But the scotch magic tape is definitely your friend. I brought with me, just to show you, some cute, inexpensive things that you could do. This is a picture of an oak leaf that I did on top of a pear inside a very simple frame. And you can see, because of my pressures, it looks like I've done a little oil painting. I also brought another bookmark. And this one, again, is a fall bookmark with little bittersweet. So the sky's the limit. Anything that you can think of, you can do. Use any color, and you can have a lot of fun using these colored pencils on your next trip. Thank you for watching, and I hope I see you again.